Hello and welcome to Museum Mondays. Today we are looking at brachiopods. Not brachiosaurs. We are not looking at dinosaurs. We are looking at creatures that are even older, much, much older. So 500 million years old are the creatures that we will be looking at today. Uh, these are just examples from our museum collection. So we have fossils here from the museum collection as well as fossils from our hands-on and educational uh, examples and fossils that I have collected from the sides of the road and the river. Um, so let's take a deeper dive in. So as I had mentioned, uh, brachiopods are still living today, unlike trilobites, which are now extinct. Um, we actually have brachiopods that are in existence today that can be found in our sea floors and ocean beds uh, that look very similar to the ones uh, existing 500 million years ago. So brachiopods look very similar to clams or bivalves. Um, they both have soft bodies encased in two shells or valves and um, that's about as far as the similarities go. Uh, once you get past that outer shell, their internal organs and structures and the way they breathe and feed are completely different. So let's get into the differences. So I'm showing you a diagram on my iPad. Uh, it's a diagram of the planes of symmetry that can be found on the shells of bivalves versus brachiopods. So as you can see, the plane of symmetry cuts the bivalve on the right there, right in half between the two shells. So one shell is identical to the other shell. Whereas a brachiopod, the plane of symmetry is right down the middle of the shell. So uh, it's symmetry is right and left of the shell, whereas the lower shell, or bottom half, may be completely different in structure and shape. So I don't have any clams to show you, but I do have brachiopod fossils. So if I were to point out the plane of symmetry on this guy, it would be right down the middle, as we pointed out in that diagram. And then this uh, curvature here would mimic the curvature over here. And then we have the uh, straight bottom. And then we also have a crinoid over here, but I'm going to talk about crinoids another day. Uh, so that's the plane of symmetry on a brachiopod. So here I have on my iPad uh, diagrams of how the valves or shells, the top and bottom shell, on a brachiopod can differ. So uh, I had mentioned clams have identical shells, so their top and bottom match each other. Whereas brachiopods, they do different in size and structure. So here we have some examples. And below the diagrams, I have an example of each that I'll try and show you. So we can see with this little guy, a good example of bioconvex. So it is uh, higher on the one side than the other. The top up here is higher than the other side. So for our plano convex we have this one. He's just a little bit more around on the one side than the other. So I'll try and put him like that if you can see. And then our final guy we, and he is very concavo convex and he actually has a little tiny brachiopod on the other side of him. So those are the different shapes that the shells can take. There are 17 different species of brachiopods that can be found in the Craigleith area. Here is a, a good variation of examples here. So we can see this one right here with its flat and ribbing. And then we have this one here, less ribbing, more concentric circles. This little guy here, he's got some great ribbing. We have our round one that's very similar to this one with the flat bottom. And then we have this one over here. He's got the round top and the flat bottom, but he also has a, uh, a winged projection over here on his bottoms. And then the one next to him. 
So of these species, um, they all had different ways of um, adhering themselves to the sea floor. So they could not swim, they could not move, uh, and that's why we have varying shapes and sizes to their shells because each species kind of took on a different way of adapting to its environment. Uh, so some were actually able to uh, have a pedicle it's called and it's a muscle formation inside that came out the back of the uh, brachiopod and would uh, dig into the mud of the seabed and anchor it so that it wouldn't float or um, be turned over and wouldn't be carried away or dragged in the heavy current. And the ones that couldn't, so uh, this one here is an example of the species that would have that kind of foot out the back and it would come out the back out here. Uh, ones that didn't have a pedicle um, would have uh, grown more calcified shells which would have made them heavier and able to sit on the sea floor much easier and not be tossed around. So here's a diagram of what the pedicle may have looked like. So you have the the two shell halves and then it's protruding out the back of the one and so uh, the pedicle is how it would have uh, attached itself to the seafloor and then the lophophore at the right there the filter feeding so they were filter feeders and they had these little cilia at the front little hairs at the front there the little opening that would uh, move the current so that the particles in the water that they eat would be filtered into the inside of the uh, two valves there. So I had mentioned that some brachiopods had an appendage or muscle that came out the back to anchor them to the sea floor so they wouldn't get flipped around and tossed around in the current. And so this is a lingula uh, species of brachiopod. They are known as a living fossil because they can still be found today and uh, they are very similar in appearance to how they would have looked uh, 500 million years ago. So we have some uh, fossils here as examples, and I'll get closer up to show you uh, just how they might have resembled our living examples. So I just wanted to give you a little closer look at these two lingula fossils we have. Uh, they would have had that protruding uh, foot <laughs> or pedicle as they call it and uh, they are quite uh, light light and flat so they wouldn't have had that heavy shell to keep them in place and um, they really do look like they could have come out of the ocean uh, yesterday so you can see those concentric circles those are growth rings so as it grew you can see its growth lines. So they are wonderful examples of fossilized brachiopods that resemble living brachiopods that we can find today. So you may be wondering how this rock is related to the fossils that we've been looking at today. It is not a fossil of a creature at all. It is actually a trace fossil. So a trace fossil is a record of the activity of an ancient creature. So uh, similar to worm holes, or holes and tunnels left over from worms, the uh, pedicle or foot from a brachiopod may have left traces similar to this in that the uh, appendage that came out their back to adhere them to the sea floor would have left a tunnel and that tunnel may have been filled once they left uh, with a more um, uh, lighter rock or sediment and that has eroded away over time to leave these wonderful trace fossil holes. And let me show you an example of the, the burrowing that the uh, brachiopod would have done. So I've placed one of our lingulid fossils on my iPad here next to the lingulid brachiopod diagram. So this is a diagram of how it may have burrowed itself into the seafloor. And so that's a side profile on the left and a front profile on the right and you can see where it would have buried itself so this is an example of where the shell would have come down burrowed itself and then come up to feed and breathe 
And so this is our guy here, and he would have come down into the earth and the sand and the silt, and then come back up to feed and breathe. So if you're walking along the beach and you see a rock with some holes in it, always take a closer look because it could be a brachiopod. See the ribbing there? So thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed.